Can you believe we're already on volume 11 of my Draw One Character in 10 style series? I am super excited. Let's go. Hey everyone, this is Mei Yu. Welcome to Fun Friday. Every Friday, I try to do something new, fun, or challenging. So today I'm going to be reimagining Mirabelle in 10 other different animated or comic like universes or worlds. So that means I'm going to draw her in 10 different styles. This is going to be really interesting and I hope you enjoy. Let me know as always which style was your favorite. And to kick things off, I'm going to be starting with Dora the Explorer. Many of you have been asking for something Dora related on my channel in the past. And because of Dora's like really cute simplistic style, I have to really cut down on a lot of the details of the original character. So I'm going to just summarize and keep the very major parts of Mirabelle in my character design. I recently released another coloring book called 30 Days of Kawaii Horror, Color a Page a Day. It's already the number one new release in its category on Amazon, and more infos later in this video. Because Dora has colored outlines for her design, I wanted to have a similar effect by using my colored brush pens. I also really like how Dora has this very iconic shape for her hairstyle and I really wanted to get something of that nature in my character reimagining as well. So that's why I have Mirabelle's like uh, hair with the pointy ends on top and then she has these cute little curls on the bottom. I think it's a nice mix. I know many people have grown up on Dora and have loved watching her shows throughout the years. If you're one of them, let me know in the comments what Dora means to you. And if you have a favorite episode, please share, I'd love to know. Okay, now I'm starting to wonder, what if Mirabelle was in the world of Dora? Like, what would they be doing? What would they be up to? Hmm. Okay, this next style has been requested by so many of you in the past videos of this series. So thank you all for suggesting Genshin Impact. All the characters and the designs look so beautiful. So I can't wait to see how she's gonna look like in this world. One of the things I really love about like, you know, just worlds or universes that is similar to Genshin Impact or like just uh, RPGs or fantasy in general is the amount of like the amount of exaggeration you can give a character design in terms of their hairstyle, their clothing, their outfits, uh, all that fancy stuff. So I really love how the Genshin Impact characters look like in terms of just, you know, their overall like visual aesthetic and I really wanted to bring some of that into my character reimagining so I wanted to exaggerate the hair, the outfit especially, and just really like maximize some of the elements that's already present in the original character and really just like bump it up a few levels. I also wanted to give my character design some extra elements like pieces of clothing or extra layers in her dress, for example. I really wanted this character to look like she could, you know, just step into the world of uh, Genshin Impact or she she is an RPG character. And what I love about RPG characters in general is that their clothing designs are just so interesting and so unique. Like usually they have all these little pieces and little like little things and layers. It's just, it's such a, you know, they're just so fun to look at. I actually love designing fantasy characters, uh, you know, just like on my own and when I'm taking breaks from making YouTube videos. And it's just so satisfying to design outfits and costumes and, you know, just really interesting clothes that I haven't really seen before or may not be so practical, but it's really fun. I 
I definitely like how I stylized her collar area and just that piece that comes across her shoulders and the points and the like the line thickness on the edges of those points it really I feel it's striking it catches my eye and I guess it's just a contrast of the pointed shapes versus the other rounder lines around that area I am gonna get some nice color blending in that dress It was really important for me to kind of space out how fast the blues will turn dark. So I have this light, beautiful light um, blended blue, and now I'm going into the darker like cyans and turquoise. And so I'm trying to pace myself. So when I reach the very bottom, it looks like a nice gradation from like uh, very light to really dark blue. It's really fun to go from different styles in the same video. Like before the first one, Dora, I had to really simplify things and really cut down on the details, especially in the dress. And now I'm adding more details on top. I'm adding uh, special like layers and sections so then I get more areas to add more colors. And it's just so much more, you know, like uh, a more of a detailed, realistic style. And then in this video, I'm gonna try some different styles that I haven't done before. And some of you haven't asked Asking and waiting for them for a while. So yeah, let's see how big of a range I can go with this character. I think there is at least one or two styles I've drawn for this video that I have not seen too much of before. Like just how I had to stylize her or exaggerate or simplify the details, but in very different ways. <laughs> I'm not gonna say much because I don't wanna spoil it. You'll have to see for yourself. I like how I exaggerated the butterfly shapes. Oh, I wish I had that dress. It makes her look so light and airy. All right, some of you have been asking for more Among Us content on my channel. So this is going to be my attempt at making a semi-realistic human character. I'm going to summarize all of that into an Among Us character. Okay, so she's not really gonna have a face or joints. Uh, she could have hair. I think I need to get the hair in there and some kind of uh, reminder that she has clothes on. Um, other than that, I think a really important thing to have obviously is gonna be like the front part of the, you know, face shield thing on the Among Us character, but I'm gonna do something, just a very slight detail to kind of get more of, you know, Mirabelle's, uh, the Mirabelle-ness into my design. I remember the last time I drew a character in the Among Us style that was with Grogu, Baby Yoda, and uh, that one, I remember, that was a lot of fun. That was easier, I think, than this one right now because it's just, uh, well, Mirba has a lot of details I need to summarize. But this is all good fun. I also like to think sometimes the simpler the design or the, you know, style, it's actually a little bit harder because you have to say the amount, like the same amount of things or same amount of details with less. So that's a really interesting challenge. I love how I got a reminder of her glasses in this in such a simple way. 
Okay, many of you have been asking for the next style as well, and I don't think I've ever done anything in this fandom before. I've been on YouTube for 11 years now, and I've never drawn anything from Yu-Gi-Oh! Ever. I don't think. Can you believe that? Anyways, thanks for suggesting this uh, series, and I'm going to turn Mirabelle into a Yu-Gi-Oh! character. And um, actually, this is one of my brother's favorite series. He has like an entire manga collection, like it's like these thick giant books all on his bookshelf, and he has like the entire anime, I think, so he's a big fan, so I'm really glad to be doing this in my video today. So one of the big things I needed to watch out for right away when I was designing my reimagining was the fact that Yu-Gi-Oh characters and the style itself, they tend to have lots of sharp, jagged edges and corners. The lines, though they sometimes can be round and soft looking, most of them look a little more... They're more rigid, and especially like the different hairstyles of the characters, they tend to look really uh, like uh, formed. They're very shape-based. So I wanted to get that into my reimagining as well to try to get my Mirabelle to look like she can belong in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh. One of the things I really like about Yu-Gi-Oh! characters' designs overall is the, like, how their eyes are designed. I like the shapes, especially, like, Yugi's eyes. They're, you know, they're quite um, rigid and jagged looking, but somehow the, just the contrast of the sharper eye outline and the round pupil inside, I kind of like that. Oh yeah, I really wanted to take care of how I shade the hair. I noticed that the characters, they tend to have, um, some of the characters tend to have these jagged pieces that are highlights of a lighter color, and then it's layered on top of their actual hair color, and then sometimes they have shadow underneath. So I wanted to go in that direction and do the highlights first as these you know, little uh, curved zigzags. And then now I'm filling in the base color, and I hope to get some shadow in there too. I kind of noticed a pattern with the first few styles I did. I don't know if you noticed that too, but first I started with Dora, so that's like a very cartoony, uh, simplistic style. And then Genshin Impact was more, like more detailed, and then it went back to something simple, and now I'm doing something more semi-realistic and detailed again. So it's just a, a fun little pattern. I'll get some more little jagged highlight shapes in the clothes too. I think it's interesting to see how different anime styles can differ so much from each other. Like, I've done Genshin Impact and that style is, you know, really nice. The lines are flowy and soft. And the Yu-Gi-Oh! style is more, uh, like, rigid and jagged and cool looking. It looks a little more edgy. And so it's, you know, it's different to see how different anime or, like, you know, anime-like universes can look like. And I've got one more anime uh, style coming up in this video later, so it'll be really interesting to compare them. Okay, another brand new style I have never done before. I've never drawn anything in this fandom yet. And many of you have been also requesting for something from Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I have to do this. So let's see how I'm going to summarize Maribel into a character in this world. OMG.
Okay, I need to make the limbs really skinny and the body kind of summarized into one simple shape. Did you used to read this series? Let me know. I used to read Dork Diaries and I even did some videos where I drew in that style and my brother read, I think he read all the Wimpy Kid books. But yeah, is this nostalgic to you? Okay, let's get something creepy in this video now. So I've been getting some suggestions from you uh, before and you really like this game called Poppy's Playtime. I've never played it, but I've seen some videos. They are really uh, interesting, very creepy and very cool. And I think it'll be fun to draw Mirabelle as one of the characters in this game. So I made the head a lot bigger and made the body really short and stubby looking, very cute. I wanted to round out the face and the cheeks especially to give her this really innocent look. But I think once you see the final like design I've done, could be a little creepy uh, because I'm trying for the contrast between something sweet and innocent looking, but something about those eyes could suggest something else. Okay, she's giving me the creeps now. So if you're one of the fans who've been asking for this style, let me know what, uh, like, what do you like about this game? Is, do you find it genuinely, like, frightening or scary? Or you just like the concept of it? Comment below. And in case you're into other like horror games, you can check out some of the other episodes in this video series where I drew different characters in the Five Nights at Freddy's style. It seems like she's just staring into my soul. Although the character design itself looks quite simple, this actually took me quite some time to complete because I really wanted to get a sense of more like realistic shading and dimension in the colors. So that's why I was layering a lot of colors into the face and the like the hair and the dress to bring out the dimension more. What would happen if this game was called Mirabelle's Playtime? And here's yet another popular request by many of you. So this is going to be Mirabelle as a Hey Arnold character. And in that universe, I wonder how her head shape is going to look like. That is the first thing I have no idea. Because characters in this show, you know, their head shapes, they're all kinds of wacky shapes. I have no idea at in the beginning of what to do with my character's head design. Like, should I do something more normal, like a round circular shape or something more exaggerated, like some of the other characters? So eventually I was thinking, you know what, since this show's style and designs are quite goofy and exaggerated, I really want to go in the more exaggerated route. I don't want to do something too, like, normal. So here we go, this is gonna be Mirabelle with a football head. Of course, I also really wanted to exaggerate her glasses as well. I just love the fact that her glasses are, like, the tops of them are poking out outside of her football-shaped head.
I also noticed that some of the Hey Arnold characters have this like colored outline around their hair only, and then the rest of their body the outline is black. So I tried to do that with my colored uh, like colored brush pen, and now I'm going into the actual hair color, which is darker than the outline. I think that look is interesting. Oh, it looks like she could be a really good friend to Arnold. Okay, and here comes the style that started this entire YouTube channel off. I know this is going to be nostalgic to many of you who have been following me in the past, and I know for sure this is going to get some of you who've, you know, kind of moved on after my channel, and then you're just finding me again after many years. Welcome back. I have missed you, and you know what? This is going to be fun to draw. Fun to draw means a lot to me as well as the creator because, you know, this is the the drawing series that started this whole channel off. I used to do lots of these cute little funny draw tutorials and many of you told me you grew up on those tutorials and you started drawing them and that's what first got you into drawing and character design and now you're into like animation and fashion design and architecture and some of you are you know working as independent artists or freelancers so I'm just so proud to know that you know fun to draw has meant so much to all of us and we've shared so many milestones over the years together and I just couldn't be happier. I also remember over the past decade, like many of you would show some of your fun to draw drawings online or like post them on like, you know, your different uh, social media. And it was just always so encouraging for me to see how you love to draw along with my videos. And I was really inspired by all of you. And some of you are still drawing and coloring fun to draw characters. And thank you to all of you who have fun to draw books and, you know, ebooks and coloring books from my Mayu bookstore on Amazon. To the older fun to draw fans, I know it's a great memory of the past and like the earlier part of your art journey. And to newer fans, it's great fun to learn and to improve your skills. So just like how I draw my other fun to draw people, I wanted to keep her head big, the body is small, and like just have the skirt fan out. I wanted to get some details in the outfit, but not too much. For her hair, I wanted to leave some white areas at first when I was coloring in the dark brown and then after I think I'm going to add some other colors to bring out more dimension. Okay, if you're a Fun to Draw fan, I'm really curious. What was the very first Fun to Draw tutorial you've seen? But no matter if you're into Fun to Draw or some of my other content, and no matter when you join my channel, I love all of you so much. You are the reason why I'm here on YouTube doing these art challenges and drawings for all of you. Okay, now this is one of the most requested styles in recent memory. Many, 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 many of you have been asking for me to draw a character in the Demon Slayer style. I am so excited for this. I've just started to watch the anime actually. I'm still in season one. So it's, you know, I think it's quite interesting, pretty epic. I like the action sequences and I think the character design is quite special and unique. So let's see how I'm going to turn Mirabelle into a character in this universe. So at first I was thinking, how am I going to make my Demon Slayer Mirabelle design look like uh, she could belong in this universe, but still she's Mirabelle. So I was thinking of like, should I put her in a, like a cool action pose or should I do something with butterflies? And eventually I was thinking I could pose her like this where she has her palm open and the butterflies there. And then I should do something in the background to really tie in the two like um, universes together.
I'm such a fan of how the special effects look like in this anime, and I wanted to get some kind of similar feeling in my character design, so I was thinking I could have these magical like swirls that kind of just uh, like float around my character and it could look similar to some of the special effects in the anime but I wanted to like make them look a little bit different as well so I'm going to infuse some butterflies so that's gonna tie it in better with Mirabelle. I also noticed the interesting line work when it comes to the uh, character designs. Like sometimes the, I really like how the lines go from thick to thin, and especially if there's like an edge, the line becomes thicker on that edge or point to really emphasize it. So personally for me, I'm a big fan of the thick and thin, and it was really fun to try that in this style. So I was talking about like different anime styles earlier in this video and how like even though they're all anime, they all have their distinctive like uh, um, identities and uh, art styles. And especially for Demon Slayer, for me at least, I feel the eyes are the most iconic and the most different from like all other anime I've seen because I'm not used to seeing the highlights like that in the middle of the eye with um, like jagged little edges. So I think that's quite distinctive. And I just love exploring anime styles in general. Like if you've seen the other episodes in this series, you'll know I've done quite a lot of different types of anime like Jojo to like fairy tale to Pokemon to Miyazaki. So they're all so unique and I love drawing in different anime styles. And if you're a fan of my art styles, you'll love my coloring book and art book I released earlier this year. You can own all 100 of the character designs I've done in volume 1 to 10 from these art styles videos. You can color 100 character designs in different art, animation, and comic styles in 100 Styles Art, a fan favorite coloring book. This is twice as thick as my other coloring books, so it's packed with fan favorite designs from my videos. You can also collect my character art in their original, full color glory in the art book. I spent over a thousand hours to create these 100 character designs. You can be the proud owner of all of them and get inspired by my art. They're both amazing value and must-haves for fans of art, anime, and pop culture. I've also released a new title in my 30 Days of Coloring series. In 30 Days of Kawaii Horror, you'll go on a creepy cute journey filled with adorable, scary chibis, creatures, skulls, devils, and other horror characters. It's the number one new release in its category already. Lots of fans are joining and you should come along. Color a page a day and at the end of the 30 days, you'll have completed a memorable journey filled with your very own unique creations. It's like your daily art therapy, you get to relax and build your creativity at the same time. Color as much or as little of each page as you like, it's all up to you and it's all waiting for you on the Mayu Bookstore on Amazon. Links in the description. I love the magical yellow swirls around my character. I think it brings a lot more of a fantasy element into this design. Hmm, the eyes really make it. Hmm, it's Demon Slayer Maribel. Or what name would you give her? Alright, the last style is going to be really interesting and fun. This is going to be very different from any style that I've done before in this video. And actually, this is the first time I've done some other character in this style. Many of you have been asking for like different artist styles or painting styles. And I remember doing some different things before in my other like previous episodes in this series. I think I did uh, Rainbow Dash in the Salvador Dali style and Ariel in the Picasso style. This time I'm going into another extreme. I love this painting and let's see how Maribel's gonna look like in this. Something 
that was really important to me was the fact that I was using my, you know, my artist markers, but I'm trying to get the effect of painting strokes or like, you know, like brush strokes. So I was really mindful of the different types of colors I was using and how I was blending them. I made sure that strokes or most of them or some of them looked more rough and not too blended in so I could get that texture in there. That was really important and I had a lot of fun. And also, yeah, there were there weren't any like, you know, uh, line art per se because I didn't want any outlines for this. It's really fun to just explore and go wild. And for this piece, I was really, you know, stretching her body, her limbs, the proportions, obviously the face and that expression. I just love it. Do you know the name of this painting? Comment below. And also what name would you give this particular piece with Mirabelle in it? It took me over 100 hours to make this video from the concepts and research to the drawing, inking, coloring, and editing. The greatest support you can give me is to smash the like button and share this video with a friend. Let me know what other styles or characters you want to see in volume 12 and I'll try my best. Subscribe in case you haven't yet so you won't miss out on volume 12 or other future videos and turn on the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching everyone, binge watch the other episodes in this series, and I'll see you really soon in a few seconds.